I have a React Redux app that I'm going to log into. And after I log in, you'll see I get an access token here in the console and a welcome page. And I could go to the users list, but I'm going to let my five second access token expire as I've set it ridiculously low. And now when I request the users, I still get the users, but look what happens in the console. My initial request was rejected. Then I sent a refresh token to get a new access token. And then my original request was sent again and was accepted. And that's how I see the users. So let's look at how this login flow with JWT authentication is set up in React and Redux. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we're going to learn about login authentication flow in React and Redux with JWT access and refresh tokens. This is an advanced React Redux tutorial. Much like university courses that have prerequisites, I recommend watching my React login series first to better understand today's concepts before you add Redux into the equation. And if you've completed my Node.js course, you've already built a version of the backend REST API that we're using in this tutorial today. Finally, you need to understand modern Redux with Redux Toolkit and RTK Query because we'll also be using it today. I have a full course on modern Redux available on my YouTube channel and it's now recommended on the official Redux website. I'll share links in the description for all of these resources and a link to the source code for this tutorial too. We're getting started today with a basic React app after you run npx create React app and of course you can remove some of the boilerplate that you don't usually use. I've removed all the dependencies that I'm not using except for React, React DOM, and then React Scripts. We're going to install some packages that we're going to use today. And the first one is Redux.js slash toolkit. The next one is React-Redux. And the final one is React-Router-DOM. You can press enter. It shouldn't take too long to install these packages and we'll be ready to keep moving. Hey, there they are already, so we see React Redux, we see Redux JS Toolkit up here at the top, and React Router DOM. The versions you see here of everything are what's current as of the making of this tutorial. If you're watching this later on, you may have newer versions than this. Now there are many places we can start today. I want to start by creating a features directory inside the source directory. And then inside this features directory, I'm going to create an auth directory. Now inside the auth, I want to create an auth slice. So now this will be a file and I'm going to type auth slice with the capital S for camel case. And we can get started here. I'm going to import create slice, there it is, from Redux JS toolkit. After that, I'll define the auth slice that we're going to create and I'll use create slice to do that. And now we'll start out with a name and that will be auth. Then we'll have an initial state. This is going to be an object that's going to hold a user. And then it's also going to hold our token. And this should be an access token that we get back from our backend REST API. Then we'll have reducers. So I'm going to have two reducers in here. One is a set credentials method. And here it's going to receive the state and the action. After that, we want to define the user and the access token. And I'm using camel case. This is what will be received from the action. Oops, I need an equal sign from the action dot payload. After that, we'll set the state dot user equal to user as we destructured those above and the state dot token will be set equal to the access token. And then we'll add our second method here. And this is going to be a logout method. And I'll type that camel case as well. So with a capital O, we'll have the state and an action. And this will be very simple. We're just going to set the state dot user back to null at logout and the state dot token back to null as well. Okay, we've finished both of those. We could put a comma here after the reducers in case we wanted to add anything else, but we're not going to right now. But we can add an export of both of those methods we created. So we'll say export const, and now we'll have set 
credentials and logout and we set that equal to the auth slice we created dot actions. Okay, after that we'll export default auth slice dot reducer. And now we want a couple of selectors we can use, one for each actually. So export const select current user. And we'll set this equal to an anonymous function that gets the state. And then we'll say state.auth.user. I'll just copy this down with shift alt and the down arrow. And I'll change this to select current token. And then I can just change the last part here that said user to token. And there's both of our selectors as well. And that completes our auth slice. Now I'm going to add another new directory to the source directory. And this is going to be called app. Now inside of the app directory, I'm going to add another directory and name it API. Inside of the API directory, I'm going to create the API slice.js. At the top of our API slice, I'm going to import create API and also fetch base query. And these come from Redux.js toolkit, but then we also have slash query slash react at the end of that. After that, we're also going to import set credentials that we created and logout. And we get both of those from the auth slice. Instead of creating the API slice right away, we need to create our base query. And we're going to use fetch base query to do that. We should really be comparing fetch base query to Axios if you're familiar with that. But this is what we use with Redux Toolkit. So now we'll say const base query. We'll set this equal to fetch base query. And now inside of fetch base query, we'll have a base URL. You want to remember to change this when you go into production. I am just setting it to my local host port 3500, which is where I'm going to run the REST API backend in another instance of VS Code. So I can interact with that and test everything out. Then I'm going to set credentials and set that to include. And that is so it will send back our HTTP only secure cookie. So you want the cookie to send with every query. And that's what we're setting that for. Then we'll have prepare headers. And this will receive the headers. And then we can destructure get state as well. After that, We'll go ahead and define a token inside of prepare headers. And this is because we want to send our access token every time too. So now we'll use get state, call that, and we want the auth.token that is in state currently. Now we'll say if we have a token, we'll say headers.set, and we're going to set the authorization header. Your backend should be looking for authorization, whether it's capitalized or not, because there's not a standard and you see it both ways. I'm using a lowercase here and my REST API code does look for both instances, either uppercase or lowercase. And what we're sending is the access token, but it needs to be in this string that starts out with bearer and then we have a space. And now we put the token in there. This is a template literal string. And after that, if, we just want to return the headers. So we're attaching that access token to our header every time with every request. Likewise, if we have a cookie, we're attaching those credentials in that cookie every time. Now we're not just going to use our base query. We want to wrap our base query so if it fails, we can reattempt after sending the refresh token and getting a new access token. So maybe our access token has expired, but we have a current refresh token that will allow us to get a new access token. So we now need to create a wrapper for our base query. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. This will take a little more room. So now we'll call this base query with reauth. And let's set this equal to an async function, and it's going to receive args, API, and extra options. It's okay if you don't understand what they all are right now, but this is what is required when we create a custom 
query function like this. So now let's define the result and set it equal to await base query. And here this receives the args, the API, and the extra options as well. Okay, now we could say here, if you want to handle other status codes, you can too. My backend API is going to send a 403 forbidden if we send an access token that would have been valid, but it's expired. Otherwise, it's going to send a 401, which is unauthorized. Maybe an API you're working with only sends a 401, for example. But in this example, I'll be looking for a 403. So I'll say if result, and I'm going to use optional chaining. And then we look for the original status. And if that is equal to a 403, then here is where we could console.log just to give ourselves a message when we're testing this out to say sending refresh token because this is what we're going to do if we receive that 403 on our access token request. So now here we'll send the refresh token and I'll say to get new access token. So that's what's going to happen here. So we'll say const refresh result and this is going to equal await base query and now we'll pass in the refresh endpoint. This is the refresh endpoint from my backend API once again, the REST API. If your refresh endpoint is different, you would want to change this to represent that. After that, once again, API and extra options should be here inside of this function call. Now we're awaiting that result. So if you want, you could console.log and log that refresh result. Of course, you can remove these or skip these console logs if you don't want them in there. After that, we're going to look for the refresh result should have data. So we can use optional chaining there as well. And now we're going to get our user const user equals API dot get state because the user should already be in our state if we've logged in and we're attempting to request something. And likewise, we're not going to be receiving the username from the backend API. We already know our name, we signed in with it. We can send it to the API to verify, but there's no reason to send it back really. So we'll just get it from our state. And now we will store the new token and so to do that, we'll use that API and pull dispatch from it. So we're calling dispatch and now we use set credentials that we defined in our auth slice. And here we'll have an object. We'll spread in the refresh result dot data and then also the user because that's what we pulled from state right here. So we need both of those for our set credentials. Remember it gets a token and the user. And we're only getting the token back from the API, at least in my example. Of course, you could customize this to work with yours. And now we will retry, spell retry, the original query with new access token. There we go. So this would be result equals await base query once again with args, API, extra options. Okay, that is a lot, but we're not quite finished. Let's finish out this nested if where we have else, and here we'll say api.dispatch, and we'll call our logout that we created. After that, we have finished this nested if statement, and this is the outer if statement. Let's scroll over and see. Yes, we have a closing curly brace as well. So after the closing if of the outer if statement, then we need to return the result because that is if everything essentially goes well. So let's save this and kind of recap here. So we've made our wrapper query and it's wrapped around the base query. And if everything goes well, if we don't have any problem there, then we're just going to return the result. But if we do have a 403, then we're going to send the refresh token and that gets a new access token that we will once again store with our set credentials. And then 
we will send our base query once again with that new access token. However, if we have an error and it's not a 403, we're just going to log out and that would likely be a 401 unauthorized. Okay, so we have created our base query and then we have wrapped it with base query with reauth. Now I'm just going to copy that name so I don't have to retype it. And we still need to create our API. So we'll do that underneath both of these. And here I'll say export const API slice, set this equal to create API. Then we'll have a base query set in here and I'll just paste in our base query with reauth. After that, we'll put endpoints and I'll put a builder, an arrow, but we're not going to put anything inside of these. I'm just going to save this because we're going to use extended API slices so we can specify what belongs to the auth and what belongs to other parts or other features of our application. So now let's go back to our features and auth directory where we have our auth slice and let's create another new file. And here we'll call this auth API slice.js. And this will be our extended slice. So I need to import the API slice that we just created. And there it is. After that, we'll say export const auth API slice. Set this equal to API slice dot inject endpoints. There it is. Well, there it is. And now Inside of this, we'll define our endpoints. So here's endpoints. We'll have our builder with an arrow and then a parentheses, curly brace. And here our first endpoint is login. And this will be a builder.mutation. And then inside of the mutation, we'll have a query and we'll pass the credentials to this query. And then once again, curly brace or parentheses and curly brace. And now we can specify some details about the query. We'll say the URL is going to the auth endpoint. The method is going to be post. And the body that we'll send with the request is going to be credentials. And after that, we're finished with that one. So there's our query. This should go back to the login, the builder mutation that we've created. So now we'll put a comma there and now I'll save this file and we're ready to finally create the store inside of the app directory. So with the app directory highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and this should be store.js. I want to make sure that that is not in the API directory, but only in the app directory. Okay, for store.js now, we're going to import configure store from Redux JS toolkit. After that, we're also going to import the API slice. And then after that, well, I didn't mean to press enter there. There we go. After that, we also need to import the auth reducer from, and that is going to be features slash auth slash auth slice. And there we go. Need that at the end. Okay, and once we've got that, we're ready to say export const store, set this equal to configure store. And now inside the store, we'll set a reducer. I could spell reducer. And now with a curly brace, we'll say API slice inside of brackets here dot reducer path. So we're getting this dynamically. And then we'll say API slice dot reducer. Then we also have auth and this is our auth reducer. After that we need to add middleware. So we'll say middleware. Then we'll say get default middleware and this will be a function. And then inside the function we'll have get default middleware once again but we call it and add concat then api slice dot middleware. This is needed for RTK query to cache our results and different things like that. So we just have to add that middleware in 
And then DevTools for now will say true. But if we were to take this into production, we would switch this to false also. So let's save this. And I see VS Code tried to add an extra import here for Git default middleware. We do not need that at the top. So if that happened to you like it did me, go ahead and remove that. We only need configure store right there. Okay, you can take a deep breath, a little sigh of relief, or even a break because most of our Redux setup is now complete. So we're ready to start working on the React app. And I'm going to go to the index.js. And here in index.js, we need to start importing things. So I'm going to import store. And that comes from our store that we created. I'm also going to import provider. That comes from React Redux. After that, I'm going to import several things from React Router. So we'll have browser router, routes, and route, all from React Router DOM. Okay, now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and leave react.strict mode in. We've got no problem with that, and we want to keep working with it to get used to the new mode that it's using. So I've got a video about that, and I can link to that below or right now up at the top. But overall, it's going to reload components twice right at the beginning. Essentially, it's going to load, unload, and reload. So you want to start getting used to that and working with that. Right now, we're going to put the provider right here. And that's not provider. I can't spell today. So provider. There we go. After we get the provider, we're going to pass in the store. And now I'll take the closing provider and put it after the app. But there's much more to go here as well because we also need the browser router. And we could also take that and put it after the app. And then we need the routes. Just switched files by mistake. There we go. We need routes here. So this is routes. And I'll pull this back. Take that. And now we actually need the route. Now some people wire all of this up in the app.js as well. I like to put all of this boilerplate for React Router right inside of the index and then do the rest of my routing inside of the app.js. So here we're going to have a route. And now the path is set equal to a slash and an asterisk because we'll have some other nested routes as well. Now we'll set the element equal to our app. And then we'll close the route out. And when we save, we should get some better formatting here. So we've got the provider inside of the strict mode, then the browser router, routes, and then the specific route. We'll do all the rest of the routing inside of our app.js. Before we move on to the app.js, I'm going to highlight the source directory once again and create a new directory inside of it called components. And then in this directory, I'm going to create a couple of basic components that we use. One is a layout.js component. So inside of this, I'm going to import outlet from React Router DOM. And then we'll just say const layout. Set this equal to a functional component. And we're just going to return the outlet that we have right there. And of course, then we want to say export default layout. That's the full component. Very basic, but we're using this outlet from React Router DOM. And you'll see how that comes together if you're not already familiar with React Router version 6. And now the second component I want to create is just going to be called public. This would be like the public facing page for a repair shop. And so I'm just going to paste this in and it's basically an HTML page, but I am bringing in link from React Router DOM because we do have a link at the very bottom that goes to the employee login. And that's what we're going to focus on is the login. But I just wanted to have this starting page for the application. And you could put basically any content you want here if you want to have this starting page and not go directly to a login page. I kind of viewed the login as a back end to the application for employees. So I just wanted to have a public facing starting page that we'll route to as well. Okay, inside of features and auth, we'll create the login component. But there's one thing I want to check first on the auth API slice. I don't think I exported this builder mutation. And we need to do that as well. So let's say export const. 
And then inside of that, we'll have our use login mutation. Remember, these hooks are automatically generated, which is very nice. And that's auth API slice is where it comes from. So we're just destructuring it there from the API slice. But they are automatically generated, and we also generate queries. They always start with use, and if it's a mutation, it ends with mutation. If it's a query, it ends with query. So now let's create that login component, and we'll call that login.js. Here, I'm going to say RAFCE with my React 7 snippets. Hit tab, and I get a basic login component, but we're going to add a lot to this. So we'll start off with an import statement. I'm going to import use ref, use state, and use effect. And all of those come from React. After that, we're going to import use navigate from React Router DOM. Then we're going to import use dispatch. There it is from React Redux. We'll also import our set credentials that we created from the auth slice. And finally, we're going to import the use login mutation from the auth API slice. Okay, all of our imports are complete. I'm going to set up some basic stuff here just with a copy and paste. And you can see what I'm doing. We'll go over it. So I set up a user ref using our use ref that we imported above and also an error ref. I'm going to use these to set focus on things in the form at the appropriate times. For example, the user field when the component loads. After that, we've got state for a user, a password, and an error message, all three of those. And then we're also creating a navigate function from use navigate. And I'll scroll up just a little bit for some more room. And underneath these, I'll put in a couple more. So this is our use login mutation. We're going to pull the is loading, destructure that from our use login mutation. We're also going to have a login. And then we set dispatch equal to use dispatch. Okay, for there, from there, we need to use effect. So with use effect, we're only going to do this when the component loads. So we will have an empty dependency array below. And then inside of this, we want to set that focus. So this would be user ref dot current dot focus. And now this will set the focus on the user ref, which is the username input when the component loads. Underneath that, I'm going to put one more use effect but this will not have an empty dependency array. We're actually going to look at the state we have for the user and the password. And if either one of those changes, then we will go ahead and set the error message back to empty because that means we may have seen an error message and we can go ahead and hide it or erase it because we're now changing one of these two fields. Okay, I'm going to scroll a little more and then we're going to create a handle submit function because we're going to have a form and this will handle the submission of that form. This is going to be an async function, will receive the event. And then inside of that, the first thing we'll do is take the event and prevent default because it's a form which could cause a reload otherwise. Okay, then we'll have a try catch block. So here's the try block. And then of course, follow that with the catch and pass an error. Now inside the try block, we're going to submit to the API. So let's get our user data. And that's going to be equal to await. And here's our login function from the login mutation. And then we'll have user and password state in both of those. Now we still need to use dot unwrap from Redux Toolkit. And this allows us to use the try catch block right here so it will respond accordingly. Okay, after that, we could log that user data if we want to here with a console log, if you decide to. I'll just keep going with dispatch. And now I want to dispatch that to set credentials. Now we're only going to get back the token. So we'll have three dots to spread in the object that we get back. But then we'll also have the user from state that we're going to set with set credentials. So we're saving the username and we should be getting an access token here.
After that, we need to go ahead and set the local user state that we have for this form back to an empty string. We need to set the password back to an empty string as well. And then we want to navigate with a successful login, and we should be navigating to a welcome screen for the employees. Now, if we have an error, I'll scroll up for some more room and paste this in because I can just break it down. So if we have an error, or there is no response essentially, first we're checking, then we'll have a no server response. But otherwise, if there is an error response and it's a 400, then we know we're missing the username or password. Some required information was missing. If it's a 401, it's unauthorized. And if it's anything else, we're just going to say the login failed. And we're going to set the focus on the error message that we're going to display on the page. And a screen reader would read this as well. And that's why part of that is important. And we're just kind of bringing the focus back to the error. Okay, scrolling once again, after that, paste these in, and these are just the handlers for the user input and the password input here. So username and password. And then underneath that, get a little space, I'll paste this in and we'll look at it. This is the content we're creating. It's essentially our form, but the first thing we're doing is looking at is loading that comes from our login mutation. So if is loading is true, we're going to show this H1 that says we're loading. Otherwise, we're going to have this content that is our login form. And it does display the error message at the top if we do have an error. Otherwise, it's just going to show the employee login. And there you can see the handle submit function is handled for the form. We have our user input here with handle user input. We have our password input with handle password input and the sign in. Now all of this is saved in this content variable. So I'll just copy that and that's all we need to return down here with the return statement for our component because this is essentially the content above. So we'll save and we're finished with the login JS component. Now I know I covered some of that a little fast. You could create your own login form or remember you can download my source code. So if you want to get this exact source code and you didn't catch all of that, you can just download my source code and review that as well. All right, now we need to create a require auth component and this will help protect our routes. So I'm going to create another component inside of this same auth directory and call it require auth with a capital R and a capital A. At the top, we're going to import several things from React Router, including use location. After use location, we also want navigate and outlet. Okay, after we have those, we want to import use selector from React Redux, and then we want to import one of our selections, select current token. Token R from auth slice. Did I spell that wrong back in the auth slice? Let's take a quick look because it's right here. I did have select current token R. We just want select current token. Let's save that. Let's go back to our require auth and we can see we need to change that now to select current token. Okay, now we're ready to create our require auth component, R-A-F-C-E, press tab, and there is the basic component. First thing we'll do is set the token equal to use selector and we'll pass in our select current token. After that, we'll get the location, set that equal to use location. And now we have a return and this is going to be a little simple compared to say a require auth component that uses roles, which is something I did in my React login series if you want to go back and see how to use user roles with this. Right now we'll just look to see if there's a token. If we have a token, that means we've logged in. So we'll say show whatever is in the outlet, which should be everything else that's protected there. Otherwise, we're going to navigate and this goes to, and we need an equals there, to the login because we're getting logged out essentially. And then the state here is going to equal, we need a from, and that will be the location that we got before. So that's where we're coming from. And we're going to replace our auth, 
or require auth component in the history with that essentially. We don't want to navigate back to this require auth component. It's not a place to stop. It's just routing essentially. It's checking our authentication. It's making sure we have a token. Again, very basic right here. You could do more to check the token. And of course you can check roles and different things as well inside this component. But this is just a basic one for the example. And now let's create one more component inside of this auth directory. And that will be our welcome component. It's going to be a protected component or a protected route. So we'll just leave it in here. We'll say import use selector from React Redux. After that, we want to import select current user and select current token. So we can display both of those from the auth slice. And then we're going to import link from React Router DOM. Now, of course, normally you wouldn't display your token. We're just doing it to make sure we have one and to see it right there on the page. RAFCE once again with ES7 snippets and we have our functional welcome component. So inside of that, the first thing we'll do is define the user, set that equal to use selector and pass in our select current user. Oops, there we go. Now I'll press shift alt and the down arrow and we can just change a couple of things here. So now we'll change these to token and we have defined both our user and the token. We don't need that extra space there though. After that, let's define our welcome message just in case we for some reason do not have a username when we attempt to load this component. So if we have a user, then it's going to be this template literal. I'll say welcome user, and put an exclamation mark after that. Otherwise, we'll just say welcome. And then let's not show all of the token. Let's just make sure we have it. So we'll say token abbreviation is going to be equal to. Now this route should be protected. So we should definitely have a token to get here. So we'll make sure we have token slice and then we'll start at zero and end at nine. So we'll have around 10 characters there, but three dots after it. And that should be good. Oh, I've got the curly brace in the wrong spot. There we go, three dots. Now we should be good. Okay, let's define content once again. Let's set our content equal to, well, I could put parentheses up here. And now inside the parentheses, I'll just paste this in. We have a section with the class name of welcome. We have our welcome message. We're showing our token abbreviation. And then we have a link to the users list if we want to go view that. Now, if I scroll up, we can pretty much get rid of this return other than the content that we just defined once again and save. And I'm just noticing we didn't save that auth API slice after we exported the login mutation. So let's go ahead and do that as well. You may have already done it. I just missed it. And the last piece before we can test our application out is to actually pull it all together inside of the app JS. So we'll start at the top here with import and we're going to pull in routes and route. And this is going to be from react-router-dom. After that, I'm just going to paste in these other imports. It's all of the components we've created except the users list, which we haven't created yet, but we will. But we have our layout and our public component, our login, our welcome, and our require auth component. And now we're ready to apply that routing here inside of our app component. So we'll start with the parentheses and then we start with routes from React Router. And then we have our first route. And then for this first route, we're going to say path is equal to slash for our home page. And then the element is going to be the layout element. And then we can just hit return right here and give ourselves some space and everything else will be nested inside of this. So I'll add a note here at first that this is going to be our public routes that we see first. Okay, after our comment, let's go ahead and add a route. And this route is going to be the index route, so we can indicate that. And then the element is going to be our public component. There we go. And after that, I like to just close this out with a single, there we go, a single slash. And now we can move down and we'll once again, I'll just actually copy this with shift alt and the down arrow. Let's 
indicate a path here now, and this path is going to be our login path, and that should be open to the public, and then we'll have element, and this would be our login component as well. Okay, after that, I'll copy our comment here because underneath is where we will put our, I want to tab that over, we will put our protected routes. Okay, now for the first protected route, or before we actually put any protected routes, we'll have our route, and the element is going to be equal to require auth, or the component is actually the value of the element there inside of these. And then we can close that, and then we'll nest inside this route any protected routes. And so now we can specify our welcome route that we have here, so we'll say route, and the path is going to equal welcome, and then the element would be our welcome component, and then we can close that out afterwards. And that's all we have for now. Our users list will also go in here because it will also be protected. I'll give another line there just to separate that so you can see the difference. We've nested everything inside of our layout, and that layout component has the outlet. I actually don't have the layout in there right. There we go, layout slash. That needs to be a component itself. Okay, so we have everything inside of that, and then these routes are public, both the index route and the login path, and then we are protecting the welcome route with our require auth component. Likewise, we will protect a users list component. I'm going to drag the Node.js code over here to a screen and fill it out. So if you've downloaded my backend REST API, I want to note a few things that I have changed in the code, specifically in the auth controller and the refresh controller. One thing I have done is set the expiry for the access token to 10 seconds, very, very short and 15 seconds it looks like for the refresh token. I did the same in the refresh token controller, and if you have a version of my code from the previous Node.js course that does not have the same code here, that's because I have also modified this as I did the JWT rotation tutorial that I will link to or show at the end of this video as well. But the code that you download in the description for this video should have this version of the backend REST API. So we've changed those expiry times to very short times just for now. Now besides that, we also want to note that we're only sending the tokens back. Sometimes during the tutorials in the past, I had sent other things as well. We've switched this to only sending the access token back. The cookie is sent for the refresh token. It is not sent back in the response. It's a cookie. The same for the auth controller there as well. So we're only sending the access token back and the refresh token is sent in a cookie. And then finally, when we get there, we're not there yet, but when we get to where we're requesting, actually it's not in the user's controller, it should be in the routes, I believe. If I find the routes, here we go. And I wanna look at the API and then the user's routes. If we look at that, I have removed the verify roles from the get users routes because we're not using roles today. So if you don't remove the verify roles when you download the version, actually I'll try to make this version available so you don't have to, but I just wanted to highlight that because if you get rejected for some reason, uh, the middleware might be catching you if you are not supplying roles as I had in the past, but we're not doing that today. Okay, enough about the backend REST API. We can go ahead and start that with npm run dev, it's got nodemon, so it should fire right up and start listening on port 3500. I think we're ready to test out our application. I'll hit control on the back tick, open up a terminal window, press npm start, and we'll see if this opens up correctly in the browser like we expect it to. Well, there it is. I've got an older version open there. So now we've got our public page. Let's see if we can go to the login page. We can. I'm going to open up DevTools, and the console is empty right now, and that's fine. So let's see if this will interact with the back end. I have my name, and I've got a password associated with my name. And we're logged in, and we've got the token. 
We're not ready to go to the users list yet, but it does work up to this point where we can log in. We could also look at the network tab and see there was a pre-flight request for auth and then the actual fetch request for auth and everything works so far as expected. So now we can log in and see our name, but we're really not testing our strategy at all. We're not requesting any data afterwards to test our access and refresh tokens for the reauth strategy. So what we need to do is add this users list that requests more data at a protected route as well, and then we can see how everything works with our base query with reauth. Going back to Visual Studio Code, now I'm going to close the terminal. We can leave it running and our changes will be reflected when we check back. Inside of the features directory now, I wanna create another new directory. And this directory is going to be users. Inside of the users directory is where I'll create a users API slice.js. Much like our auth API slice, the first thing I'm going to do is import the original API slice because this is going to extend that. And then I'll go ahead and say export const and say users API slice, set this equal to the API slice dot inject endpoints curly brace afterwards and we define our endpoints once again. We set a builder and then, oops, not the dot, not a build create API, just a builder, there we go, with an arrow. And after that, we have the parentheses and the curly brace once again, and here we can define our method, which is get users. Now, this will be a builder.query, which was different from what we did with the auth, which was a builder.mutation. Now, the parentheses, curly braces again, and we can define the query. This will be an anonymous function, and now we can just specify the endpoint, which is the user's endpoint. I'm going to put one other value here, and this is called keep unused data for, and I'll put five. This means for five seconds, and this is about the cache that's in RTK query. We're not doing anything else other than using this query with RTK query, but it will keep it cached. The default is 60 seconds, but I just want to do that for five so we can test it out and see the difference and we don't have to wait around for the full 60 seconds. So let's save these changes, but we also once again need to export at the bottom. So we'll say export const, have our curly brace, and then this will be use git users query. So this is an example of once again, this hook was created automatically and it starts with use and this time it ends with query instead of mutation. And it comes from destructuring the user's API slice that we created. So we could easily put more methods in here if we wanted to. But for this example, that's all we need. At the top, for some reason, this switched to build create API or it added it. I need to remove that. All we really need at the top here is the API slice. Still in the users directory, now we want to create our users list component. So users list capital U capital L dot JS. I'm going to paste this in and then review it with you to save just a little bit of time, but we're importing in our use get users query that we just created inside of the users API slice. We also need link from React Router DOM. And now inside of the users list component, we get all of this from the use get users query. So notice the data comes as data and we're renaming it users here. We also get is loading, is success, is error, and then if there is an error, we also have error information here. And we get all of that from this hook that is generated from RTK query there. And now let's create our content. So this will be an if statement. So we start out with let content above and if is loading is true, then the content is going to equal this loading paragraph. Otherwise, if is success is true, we're ready to display our content. This is a users list inside of this section. I'm mapping over the users with list items. I know somebody is going to say, don't use the iterator from map for a list or it could cause problems in React. There's only three users here. It should not be a big deal for this example. But if I don't say this now, I'll probably get a comment. <laughs> okay, then we have back to welcome. So here we have the link that will just take us back to the welcome page. Likewise, if is error is true, then you can go ahead 
and have JSON stringify and the error because it will be an object that we would get back. It will have several different properties to it. And then we're just returning the content once again that we're creating here in the users list. Again, we're creating this and it's going to perform this query so we can see if our strategy for the JWTs are working. With our users list complete, let's go to the app.js and import that as well so we can use it. I've import users list, there it is. And I got the wrong one, let me try that again. Import users list and there it is, second one in the list. Okay, after that, we need to go ahead and copy this down with Shift, Alt, and the down arrow. This path is going to be users list, and so will the component. And I think we're now ready to test out the application, so let's bring up Chrome. And we'll go back and just refresh here, and that gets rid of our current state, so now we're back at the login and I'm going to log in, and I'm going to try an incorrect password first. And yes, we got a no server response error. If we look at the console over here, it is a 401. That's what we expected, unauthorized. So let's try the correct password. And logged in, everything looks good. Let's look at the users list while we can. And there it is. Now let's go ahead and look at the network tab as well. So here we had the pre-flight for auth, and now we had the regular auth that was correct. Then we had the pre-flight for users, and then we had the regular request for users, and it is correct, so that's all good. If we go back to welcome, I may have ran out of time yet, but no, no problem. And here's why, you're not seeing any other requests. And that is because RTK query is caching this information. And remember the thing we had that said, keep, let me find it exactly so I can remember the exact wording for this. It said, keep, uh, we'll find it here. Where is it, in the API slice? No, it was in the user slice. There it is, keep unused data for five. So as long as we're using that data, if we're on the component, then the component is subscribed to that data, so it's in use. So we have to leave that component for at least five seconds for it to need to put the request out once again for that user's data. So I will hide this, and now if we go to the user's data, it's going to put out the request, and everything is timed out because our tokens also expired while I was talking. So we have users pre-flight, and then users fetch fails with the 403. Then the refresh pre-flight, and then the refresh also failed with the 403. So let's go through this again, and I'll clear this out, and I'll enter in my password. And now we've got auth and auth, again, the pre-flight and the actual fetch. Now let's go to users, and we see the request, pre-flight and fetch for users. But if we go back, and it hasn't been five seconds, and we go back, there's no request going for users. We're pulling it from the cache every time. And we could do this for the next 10 seconds because it's not going to expire, but our other tokens may expire while we're doing this, but we're still not having an issue. And that's okay because this is what the expected behavior is. But now if we go ahead and let this set for five seconds without being on the user's component or without the user's component being subscribed to that query, we've let the five seconds expire now. Now it will need to request the user's data, but our tokens have expired and will be kicked back out to the login. And in between, there is this little bit of time now where I could log in and I'll get my password back in there one more time. And now I'm logged in and I wanna look at the users list and I go back. Now it's only going to wait for five seconds, but my token's not going to expire, so I will see it again like we did at the beginning of the video. So here we go. And now I can still see the users list, but notice my first request failed and then it did a pre-flight and a fetch for uh, refresh. And then once we got that new access token, then the new request or the 
actually the original request was sent with the new access token and now everything is good again. So I hope this helps you understand how React and Redux can work together to provide the same type of JWT authentication flow that you can achieve with Axios and Axios interceptors. If you're interested in learning more about the Node.js REST API that we used for the back end in this tutorial, make sure to check out my Node.js full course and then check out the JWT rotation Node.js tutorial to learn even more about JWT. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.